Hi there, I'm Mary Susie from Bead Me a Story, and this is the second bow tie bracelet that I am presenting to you. Uh, this one is made with a smaller size when the, than the first bow tie I made, which is very chunky and ideal for first time beginners, but this one is a little bit smaller and a little bit more delicate. And um, so for those of you who like slightly more petite jewelry, this one will be for you. It's really not too much harder, just that the materials are smaller. So make sure you've got good eyesight to be able to close these jump rings well. Um, one thing I wanna point out to you is when you measure this to either fit on your wrist or if you're using a ruler, make sure that you are measuring this based on the outside row and not the inside row because the inside row of components is going to bunch up and um, form a slight dome. You can see from the side, it doesn't form a major dome, but this is sticking out a little bit and um, therefore that measurement is not gonna be quite as good as what you're seeing on the outside of the piece. And you'll also know we added beads. Um, I love these colors with uh, fall and Halloween coming up. I thought the purples and greens and oranges would uh, make a great complement for this time of year. And I hope you love it as much as I do. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to make this bow tie bracelet, the first thing that we wanna do is take a piece of string. Now, I am using a small piece of leather because I'm working with uh, smaller sizes in this format. And um, I could be using like bead wire and fold it in half as well. That will work just as well. But uh, I found that, you know, just a small piece of leather works fine for this. So I'm gonna take my two larger O-rings, and these are 7.4s, and put them onto this string of mine that's gonna become a needle. And I've folded it in half. So basically what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna go ahead and pick up two of the closed jump rings. So I took half of my jump rings and closed them, and I took the other half and opened them. So you can see I've got orange jump rings that are open, and all of my Kelly Green jump rings are closed, okay? So these closed ones, I'm using two of these green ones and I'm pulling them over top of two O-rings. So you can see there's actually not one, but two O-rings here. And we just pull them on top of it, okay? So give it a little tug with your left hand. I usually use my thumb to get a good grip on this. And then you can see I was just grabbing and pulling with my right hand. Okay, and then you can see that we want we want these jump rings to land right about in the middle. So it may not be exact, but that's where we're shooting for. And then just so that the stuff is going to lay a little bit better, I'm pulling these back. Okay, so you can see basically how we're going to use them. Okay, so I've already done some that I have set off to the side here. And I'm gonna pull, pull this side back and this side back. And this is just gonna lay better so that you can see clearly on here that there's two O-rings on each of these and that there's two jump rings sitting in the center of them. And I'm gonna do a couple more and just set them off to the side. We'll be linking all of these together. So this is our, um, our first part that we're making, okay? And then I'm gonna scooch these out of the way. And now for the next part, what we wanna do to start linking these together is we're gonna be using our smaller O-rings and our open jump rings. And then we are also gonna use one bead on each jump ring, okay? And we're gonna be linking at the top and at the bottom. So each time we link one of these little bow ties together, the bow tie component from step one, each time we link them together, we are going to be linking them with one jump ring and we'll be connecting two O-rings, but only on this first step do we actually need to bring 
two of these five millimeter o-rings into the mix after this we'll be using like as we connect this next one we'll just need one here and one here but we'll be connecting back to these ones that are already on here okay so just so i explain that thoroughly before we begin all right so i'm going to pick up my pick up my jump ring i didn't want to mess up my whole situation i had going on there so okay so we'll pick up one small o-ring and then i'm going to pass through the left component but i'm passing through it on the right top side so you can see i'm only passing through one of the o-rings and that's the left top and then i'm going to pick up this first component and now I'm pick it, passing through the right top and I of course forgot something because we're doing this beaded let me start over again because we're doing this beaded whenever I use beads I like to pick them up first whenever I can and it's just take some of the hassle out of putting the bead on because it's going to uh, stay in place for me and it's going to kind of butt up against the pliers so that it won't fall off easily okay so once again, I've, I've picked up the smaller O-ring. I passed through the left top of the one that had been on my right. Then I'm gonna pass through the right top of the one, the component, the bow tie component that was to the left. And then I am going to pick up a five millimeter O-ring again. And then I will close this. Okay, so you'll see the smaller O-rings, there should be one sitting over top of each of the bow tie configurations. Okay, so there's one over here on the left, one on the right. Now I'm just going to flip this over. Just makes this easy to reach. And I'm going to basically do the same thing at the top. So see, I'm going to use this jump ring. I'm going to pick up the bead. Pick this up, pass through here, and then come up through here and pick up this next one. So bead first. That's the, that's the hardest thing to remember. If you made uh, one of the larger bow ties first, and then you're now working with this beaded one, it's always hard to remember to pick up the bead first. Okay, and you see I picked up my smaller O-ring. I'm passing through both these. Since they're linked together on the other side, it's a little easier this time. And then I'll pick up my second O-ring. Okay, and we'll just close that. And kind of give these a little pull at this point. I want to make sure that the these purple ones are kind of sitting inside of these violet ones. And as we go along and as this builds up, the uh, purple row is going to kind of push forward. And this, this row of our smaller O-rings is going to um, kind of come down and be a little tighter. And that's the part that's going to be against the skin. Okay, so I've got another jump ring. You can see I brought my new component in. So once again, we're gonna pick up a bead and a small O-ring. Okay, I'm gonna pass through the left top side of this bow tie component. And then I'm gonna pass through the top right side of the working segment, okay? And then I'm also going to pass through this small O-ring that's right above it. Okay, so you can see that we only need to add one in each row because we're going to be using the working O-ring to connect to. Okay, so now you see we have two jump rings and we have three of the small O-rings. I'm going to flip this over. Okay, and then again the same thing. We'll pick up our bead. It's got too many beads there. Our five millimeter O-ring, which is our smaller O-ring. 
I'm going to pass down into the left top of our newest component that we added and the right top of the working component and then through the five millimeter o-ring that sits above it okay so pretty simple here this is this is not a hard pattern this is a beginner pattern great one for getting started and you can see this this particular pattern has I'm really happy with the colors that I chose for this one. I think it's really lovely, particularly for this time of year as we're coming into Halloween and uh, you might be wearing, you know, more oranges and purples and greens. So this will this will go great with all the colors you want to wear at this time of year. Okay, so you see that? So once again, we're just going to continue adding in the same way. So for each row we add, we'll have a jump ring with a bead. Okay, and that'll happen at the top and the bottom. So let's bring both of those in. Okay, that's what's gonna join our working component with our newer component. And then each one of these working components will have a smaller O-ring in it. And that smaller O-ring becomes the outside row that's stretchy, okay? So let's keep working on this. Let's keep adding rows to this. And then I'll be back to show you how to join uh, the segments together um, to finish this and make the whole bracelet continuous. Okay, so to finish this piece, um, basically, basically what we're gonna do is, so this would be the end. And I'm basically showing you the part where we would bring our start up to meet with the end and you can see how these meet up. And that's basically what I'm showing you flat down here, okay, is I'm, I am just joining two pieces. But this is basically what it would end up looking like. And I th just think it's clearer for you to see all the parts and all the pieces if I do this flat instead of bringing the end up and around. Okay, so you can see I have a smaller O-ring here, and then I'm gonna pass through the top left and then through the top right over here, and then through the smaller O-ring. So I'm gonna pick up my bead on this jump ring before I start doing that, and then we're just gonna join that. And then we'll flip this over, and same thing. We'll, we'll go through the smaller O-ring, this uh, bottom piece, it'll be at the top once we flip it over, this part and this part, okay? So we're, we're passing through four things. And this is actually very simple to join the start to the end of this particular weave. Okay, so I'm gonna take the jump ring. I'm picking up my bead. As I said, I'm gonna pass through the small O-ring and through just one of these purple O-rings in the center. And then I'm gonna pass through the top right of the O-ring on the other part and through the o-ring that is above it oops kind of lost hold there that's fine okay and then we will close this jump ring okay and voila you can see the top is finished and then we're gonna turn the whole piece around for ourselves, okay, so that we can we can reach the top once again, okay? And then we're just really doing the exact same thing. We're taking this jump ring, picking up our bead, and then we'll pass through the small O-ring, this one remaining, in the center, that's the top left, and then the top right of the other component, and then through the rubber O-ring that is above it. Okay. And then that is it. Then you will have a continuous bracelet. Now I was just joining two parts of it together, but now that we have a much, uh, much longer scenario, you can see that how this meets up is, is just what I just showed you. Okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this project. Um, please be sure to like and follow us on uh, YouTube. And of course, all of these projects are available 
at beadmeastory.com. This is a kit that you can purchase so that all the pieces are ready to go for you and you can just go ahead and make this. Okay, thanks for joining me. Have a great week.